Hello students and welcome to the next lesson in our AS Physical Geography course. Today we're going to be looking at the water debt. What is a water budget? A water budget is the term that we use to describe the balance between the inputs and outputs in the hydrological cycle. This relates to the term water debt because water debt is when the water budget has a negative balance, that is to say when the outputs are exceeding the inputs. It pretty much shows how much water there's going to be in the drainage basin on a whole, and as we know, the water levels will vary depending on the amount of inputs and outputs in the drainage basin system. Inputs and outputs. The first lot of inputs is known as precipitation, and this is when the rain or snow falls into the drainage basin and is collected into the river. The outputs are runoff and evapotranspiration, and this is when the water exits the drainage basin. So how is this shown on a graph? Well, we use something we call the water budget graph, and it looks something like this. So on the x-axis, we have the time in months, and on the y-axis, we have the levels of precipitation. The green line on the graph shows levels of precipitation, and the red line on the graph shows levels of evapotranspiration. So in the early months, so January, February, March, and April, Precipitation exceeds evapotranspiration. This is when we have soil moisture recharge and surplus. Then later on in the cold, in the slightly warmer months, such as March, June, July, and August, evapotranspiration exceeds precipitation. This is because there is more evaporation in that time. So at this point, we have soil utilization and soil moisture deficit. Then later on in the colder months, precipitation begins to exceed evapotranspiration once again, since there's not enough heat to evaporate the water, and we start the circle again with soil moisture recharge. This happens in October, November, and December. So now we're going to look at the water budget process in more detail. Firstly, I just wanted you to copy down the graph and take all the points from it, and now we're going to be explaining why your levels of evaporation and precipitation change. So firstly, we have step one. This is the soil moisture recharge. Now this happens when the precipitation exceeds evapotranspiration. And what happens is that the moisture enters the soil's pores and refills them. So in the river, the soil has a lot of pores. And when the water enters inside of them, this is called the soil moisture recharge. Now part two is called the soil moisture surplus. And this is when all the soil's pores are completely full with water and they begin to overflow. So this is shown in the part of the graph called soil moisture surplus and is generally happening between February and April. Next up, we have the soil moisture utilization. And this is not part three because it isn't actually a process, but it pretty much shows when uh, sort of soil begins to uh, like let go of the water, so there's more evaporation and infiltration. This then leads us on to the third step, which is known as a soil moisture deficit. So this happens when the evaporation increases tremendously, and now with the hotter temperatures, um, all the water is exiting the soil's pores, which has been happening in utilization. The soil moisture deficit is when now the soils um, have their pores pretty much clean, and there isn't much water in them at all. Now, this brings us on to the fourth part where we have the colder months where there's not much evapotranspiration and we get to a point where there is more precipitation. So this brings us full circle and we have the recharge happening again. So now we're going to look at the water budget cycle and this is pretty much just an illustrated way I've shown of how the water budget cycle really works. So this is the glass of water, but it's pretty much showing how the drainage basin uh, water levels rise and fall over periods of time. So at the moment, we have the, a standard glass of water at the beginning of the year, let's say January. The first few months of the year, January, February, March, it's a bit colder and there's more precipitation. So this causes the water level to rise and now we have soil moisture surplus. So at this moment, the pores have, or in this case, the glass of water, have higher levels of water inside them. Now the times change and the months become a lot um, hotter. So what happens is that there's more evapotranspiration. This means that the water levels begin to decrease as more water evaporates. We then get to a soil moisture deficit where there is so much more evapotranspiration that there isn't much water in the pores whatsoever. 
Then we come full circle in the colder months, closer to September, October and November, where there is a lot more precipitation, which brings us to the top again. Okay, so here are some questions. What I would like you to do now is pause the video and have a go at attempting them. And once you have done so, hit play so you can check out the answers. Okay, so here we have the answers. If you did get all of them correct, congratulations. I would advise you to move on to the next video. However, if you did not, just simply pause the video and check over your notes or rewind and see where you did go wrong so that you can get it right for next time. Okay, so we've reached the end of the lesson now. And next lesson, we will be looking at part four, which is all about the storm hydrograph. If you did have any more questions or you would like to revise more of your subjects, be sure to check out www.revisealevel.co.uk, where is a lot more material which you can revise from. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.